Good evening and welcome to Milkshake Monday, episode 212, The Vessel Called Worry. I said the holiday edition because we're going to talk about jobs, possessions, and the children. And for some of you, you understand that I did a teaching on October the 9th at Elam Christian Fellowship in Greensboro, North Carolina called The Vessel Called Worry. And the emphasis was on sickness and disease, especially knowing that October is breast cancer awareness. The focus was on sickness and disease and overcoming the worry that we all tend to face when it comes to sickness and disease. But tonight's focus is going to be in the same vein, but focusing on the job, possessions, and children. I wanted to share a personal story. Uh, recently, my mother had a fall and my daughter asked me, mom, how are you doing? And it made me reflect on the fact that when my late husband was going through his sickness and disease and we were trying to do everything we could to, to make him better, feel better and take care of him and all the caregiving, I came to the realization as he was coming toward the end of this natural life and going to prepare to go to heaven that as much as we love people and as much as we want the best for them, we are not in control of life and death. We can do all that we can, but in reality, we can do our best, but God really is controlled of life and death. And when my mom had her situation of her fall, and praise be to God, she's okay, I, I tend to kind of settle myself to say, Anita, do all you can, but recognize life and death is in the power of God's hands. And I try to calm myself not to be worried about some of the things that I have no control over. And so as God gave me the teaching that I shared yesterday with the wonderful fellowship of believers in Elam Christian Fellowship with the, they're under the leadership of Pastor Audrey Johnson and his wife, Sean Johnson, uh, Lady Johnson. Uh, it was a beautiful testimony of what the Holy Spirit can do. And I knew that I had to teach Milkshake Monday, and he gave me what he wanted to share for tonight. So for those of you who have the opportunity to actually hear that teaching from yesterday with the focus on sickness and disease, I welcome you to listen tonight because it will be a different focus. We're going to come out of the first scriptures are going to be out of Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, and then we'll jump down to verse 24 through 34. The same base background scripture, but we're going to talk about a different focus. So in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, and I'm reading out of the Amplified. So do not be like them praying as they do, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. No one, going to verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. 24 is going to be one of our emphasis verses for tonight. We didn't focus on that as much as we did on sickness and disease, but we're going to be focusing on that scripture. So let's jump down to verse 25. Therefore, I tell you to stop being worried or anxious, which is perpetually uneasy, distracted, about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow seed nor reap the harvest nor gather, the, nor gather, let me get my pages, crops and barns, and yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wildflowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all of his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? 
For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all of these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first, and most importantly, seek, aim, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you. Verse 34, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And I, saints of God, got tested on this today. I lost a very treasured heirloom that I've had for a while. Rev bought it for me for a Christmas gift and I lost it today. And when it happened, we looked and we called places that we'd been. My friend Lodora and I, who was blessed to uh, go down with me to Greensboro. But I didn't worry. I was sad. I was disappointed, but I didn't worry. I said, you know, the Lord allowed me to have that for a time and it's gone. And if it comes back, praise be to God. But if it's not, there are more things to be concerned about than that possession. So we are going to focus. I talked about the guardrails. And before I get to the guardrails, I want to talk to you about serving God and mammon. And I want to give you an uh, understanding. God tells us we can't serve both. God and mammon. And I gave you the listing of those different elements of what mammon is, because a lot of times we say money. And the reason why I put job and possessions, because as little people, we are be being taught the American dream. And guess what? The little people, which are the children, see how we treat these little children. We tell them how wonderful they are. And I've told you about that, but I was thinking about a happy meal, kids meal. We don't just bless the children with food. And, and then in this Matthew 6, it talks about, don't worry about the food you eat and the clothes, but think about how we start our children off. These little bitties starting at two or three with these kids meals, these happy meals, whatever you want to call them. They should be thankful for the meal and to eat. Most times they're more happy to go to the place to eat outside of their home instead of being grateful for the meal prepped in their home, in the refrigerator and in the pantry or whatever you're getting the food from. But we are, we're teaching these children from the young age that it's not good enough to get the food. You got to get a treat. You got to get a toy. And we're not just going to give you any toy. We're going to give you a toy that's matching to some movie that we're going to, these little children are going to say, I want to see that movie because I want to get the toy that matches what the movie's talking about. And it's got to be gender specific. And the kids are going to have a fit if they don't get the toy. So they're not, they're learning to be ungrateful. They're learning to be not only not grateful, but they have to be specific in the possessions they get because if you don't give them the right possessions, they're going to have a fit. Then they grow up and we talk about the American dream and how they need to get the good job, get the great house, get the great car, get the, the 401k, get all these possessions so that they can show that they are successful. We don't talk about God being the gift. He's somewhere in the background. So isn't it interesting that when God talks about the father knows what we have need of before we ask, Christ starts to teach his disciples about the model prayer saying our father and talking about, you know, pray for our daily bread, that everything we focus on is about the future, about what we need to have to make our future better and greater. Now, the thing about worry is that when you start to get the things, the possessions, and you start to leave God out, the thing about the vessel of worry is that the more you get, the more things and possessions you have, you tend to start worrying about losing them, or you don't have enough, or what are people going to think when they see your possessions? Think about this. Many people don't want people to come to their house for a prayer meeting, Bible study, just to have fellowship, to have a hamburger, hot dog, whatever, peanut butter, jelly sandwich, because they think about their possessions and they wonder, what are people going to say? Is it good enough? Is it big enough? What are they going to, how are they going to judge me? Because you're not thinking about your possession being from the Lord, from the hand of God. He's giving you the job, the possessions, the money, even the children that we're going to talk about. You start to think about what are they going to think about me and my stuff? Or do I have to use too much of my possessions and my money and what's in my bank account to bless these people that are coming in and to share with them what God has shared with me or with us? That's how you start to see the tw twisting of the fact that you say in the scriptures, you can't serve 
God and mammon. And verse 24 is clear because you're going to hate the one and love the other. You're going to despise the one and, and not really care about the other. And what you see more and more this day and age is that the churches are empty. Many times that where the house of God, the house of prayer is supposed to have the first fruits of our income, you're not coming to church. You're not giving the first fruits of your income. And if you do come, you're giving a tip. A tip is normally 15%. And that's not what you're giving. You're giving the tip of here. Here's the tip. Take this dollar and you better be happy. That's the tip we're giving. You better take this $5 all crumpled up and you better be happy. But God said, no, no, no. He said, bring all your tithes and offerings so there'll be meat in my house and prove me. But guess what? We're proving Matthew 6 and 24. You cannot serve God and mammon. And our possessions are starting to possess us. I'm going to take you over to Philippians chapter 4 because I, I'm going to use the guardrails that I talked about in the vessel of honor, the vessel, excuse me, called worry. I'm going to talk to you in the sense of your job, your possessions, and your children. And then I'm going to give you a real example. In the guardrails that I spoke of, we used, first of all, we went to Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read this. Be anxious for nothing. That means whatever you got going on with your stress about your job, whether you're going to get the wage that you want, the compensation that you want, if your job is getting ready to end, if you're not going to get the job offer that you want after you had the interview that you stressed out about, or you're getting the possessions and you're worried about it, is the house going to be big enough? Am I going to lose the house? Am I not going to lose the house? What's going on with the car? Is the car going to break down? Am I going to need new tires? All this is going on with how you are anxious. And guess what? Those children make you anxious. And the thing about the vessel called worry is that the more things you get and the more things that you elevate and exalt above the Lord, the vessel gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And guess what? When you're stressed and worried about your possessions that are excelling above the Lord and exalting themselves above the Lord, that's stressing you out that you can't even sleep and eat and feel good and, and all the things that are going on. But when you add on top of the job possessions and the, the issues with your children, you add sickness and disease. Do you understand how it gets quadrupled? Because you don't have the place of where God is in your life, in the right position, in the place, and the worry that you can't do anything about your, your life, even by worrying, all of this stress is on you. And the thing that's killing us even more than we think we think cancer is going to kill you. Diabetes is going to kill you. Kidney disease is going to kill you. All these different ailments are going to kill you. But now they're saying that people are so stressed out and depressed and worried that they are saying they would rather take their lives than to stay in this life where they just have the vessel of worry is so overwhelming that they can't even think that life is worthwhile. So if you think I'm talking about something trivial, I'm not. God talks about worry and being anxious in the Psalms. In Matthew, in Philippians, he tells us we cannot worry. And this is what he talks about. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. Look at verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the thing about what we're going through with our jobs and our possessions, and even these children, the children that are little grow up to be teenagers, grow up to be 20-something, 30-something, 40-something, 60-something. And the parents of the children are so afraid of them failing, of them going to jail, of them dying, that it's stressing them out to the point that they're almost dying over the stress of trying to be the savior of these children. And they cannot add one hour to the children's life. And they're even stressed out in Matthew 6, 24 through 34, about the fact of the possessions of the children. Do the children have name brand clothes? 
Why are you stressing about the clothes of the children? Why are you stressing that you can't be grateful that the children can eat a piece of bread and butter, a piece of bread and cheese. No, I got to have a hamburger steak. I got to have the best of the best because my children just can't eat what was good enough for me. I've got to make sure they have better. I've got to make sure they don't have off-brand clothes. They're not going to this store. I need them to have that store with the label. I have to let people know my children have arrived and they're successful. And God is saying, that's superficial. You can't serve God and mammon. You're worried about the children have these possessions, but you don't want them to have a faith in the Lord. You don't want them to know about the word of God. More and more parents are sending their children to church and dropping them off. They got better things to do than go and learn of God. Send them in the church with the other adults, but I don't need to be there. Send them in the church with the grandmamas and the aunties. I don't need to be there. But I want us to understand that when it comes to the vessel called worry on the jobs and the possessions and the children, I want to use the same guardrails when it comes to the peace of God that says here, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The first guardrail that we're going to talk about is trust to know that God knows your timeline and the timeline tonight that's being talked about of that job that you have, that you're worried, am I going to get a pink slip? Is it going to take me through retirement? Is the job going to be fulfilling so I can make my selfish ambition? I want to arrive. I want to have the position. I want to have the salary. I want to have that office with the admin. I want to have all the things that I want and I think I deserve in this life. But God knows the timeline of that job start finish and end. What you're going to do, what he's going to allow you to do in that job. And guess what? He knows what possessions you'll have in your timeline. Ones that you will fiddle away. Ones that you will hold on to say, I only have these possessions because of the grace of God. I only have the pay, the compensation, the cars, the fruits of my labor. I only have them because of the grace and mercy of God. But guess what? When you find that you've elevated and exalted those things above the Lord, God knows that timeline that you're going to have that stuff that's elevated is short because you cannot serve God and mammon. And God is the one that's allowing you to have that stuff. And if you can be so disrespectful and dishonoring to the Lord of Lords who gave you the job, who gave you the possessions, you don't care about what he's doing for your life. Why should he allow you to have what you have? And now we have these children that are heritage from God. God has allowed wombs to be open. People are infertile and can't have children. And the people with children think, oh, these are my kids. I will do what I want. But God controls the timeline of the children. And I'm going to show you in the story of Job. Job 1 shows you. Job was wealthy. Job had children. Job had possessions. He was well known. And God allowed Satan to touch every facet. And God knew the timeline. It was a surprise to Job that all of his children were going to be destroyed in one whirlwind. The corners of the house were going to come down and they were going to collapse and all of his children would die instantly. He would not know that all of his livestock would be taken. His servants would be taken. He didn't understand anything that was going to happen. But God knew the timeline. And just like at the end of Job, God allowed all of that to be given back to Job and more. You have to understand when it comes to what you're worrying about with this vessel called worry, it's got to go. You have got to put, we have got to put our trust in the Lord. Even when it comes to the timeline of these jobs, these possessions, and these children that God has graciously given to us, we have to understand that it's the Lord. And I showed the church about Psalm 139, 16, because it says, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and your book they are all written the days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them the days that are fashioned for us have a lot that we don't know 
God has revealed in the scriptures many stories where he's told people in their dreams, this is the dream of the future for you. But guess what? In the case of Joseph, he saw the dream, but he never saw the pit. He never saw Potiphar's house as a slave, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife of rape, going to the prison. He didn't see that his family would come and he'd see his brothers again and he'd do the testing and that he would be the very person who would allow that nation not to starve to death in the famine. But guess what? God knew it to the point that God gave Joseph the dream in advance. When you start to trust God and not trust the mammon, God will show you things because he knows that he can trust that you understand he's trustworthy. The second guardrail after the first, trust to know God knows your timeline for your job, possessions, and your children. The second guardrail is God has all power. Just like I shared about Job, it was God who allowed Satan to take what he took from Job. But he said, everything but, you can't touch his life. And even when you saw that God allowed him to touch his physical body of that sickness and disease and the boils, God still had authority, said, you can do this, but don't do that. And when it comes to your job and your possessions and your children, the Lord is still in, has all power and all authority in heaven and on earth. But guess what? You are trying to be the savior. You think you control what job you have because you're so smart. You're so educated. You're so knowledgeable. You have the power to control your destiny of the job you're going to get. You have the power to go and get to the bank and you can get all the stocks and all the houses and all the cars and everything you want. And the children, if you want five, you can have five. If you want two, you want two. If you want to do it here, if you want to do it there. If you want to have in vitro, if you want it, everything is in your control. So you think. The word of God that teaches us in Matthew 28, 18, didn't say you and I rose with all power. It said Jesus Christ. So when we start to see that we are having the vessel called worry over the jobs, possessions, and the children, it's because we have got it twisted. We are finding ourselves that when God says you can't serve God and mammon in Matthew 6, 24, we are trying to do both. And he says you can't do it. He says you can't do it. In the scriptures, it says, for this is Jesus, not Anita, not Mary, not Pam, not anybody under the sound of my voice. It says, all power has been given to me. The me is in red letters. It's Jesus Christ, the risen Christ, the Christ that's at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty in heaven. He says, it's been given to me in heaven and on earth. And on earth, we have the jobs. On earth, we have the possessions of the houses and the land. On earth, the children, yes, came out of our bodies, but guess what? The Lord knew these children before they were in our wombs. He knew the whole purpose of the substance of their purpose of what he called them to do. That's why he, he can be trusted to know their timeline. And if you have disobedient children, you can keep killing yourself and worry. That's not what God wants for you. But you have to allow those children to be on God's altar and you have to allow the word of God, which will not return void, to be executed in their lives. Because you are disobedient, you have a choice and a consequence of that disobedience. You can choose to be disobedient to God's word, but there is a consequence. And mama and daddies and aunties and uncles and grandparents, you are trying to be savior over children that don't want to have any reverence or respect for the Lord. And they have said, when it comes to God, I choose mammon and I despise and I hate what God says does and want for me. And you wonder why things are not going right until they are convicted and converted to know who God is and respect and love and be dedicated to the things of God. God who controls their timeline, God who has all power. He knows what he is planning to allow for them to have happen in their life. And Satan's whole purpose, as we know, is to steal, kill, and destroy. And guess what? When you love the mammon, you are trusting and giving your life 
to what Satan has in this natural plane. When I take you to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8, I'm taking you to where the tempter, the Holy Spirit brought Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 40 days and 40 nights happened where Jesus wasn't having food or drink. So he was weakened in his natural body, but his spiritual makeup, because he was always going to serve God, his father, because they are the triune God. He is God. The Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son of God are one. And when Satan gave temptation one, temptation two, temptation three was what God is talking about in Matthew 6. You can't serve God and mammon, but Satan wanted Jesus, who he knew was the Son of God. He showed him everything and he said, all of this I will give to you if you just bow down. And guess what? Jesus had to tell him. He told him, oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to read the scripture very quickly. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. Again, the devil took him up and on exceedingly, on exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the, their glory. And he said to him, all these things, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, away with you. Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only you shall serve. And after that, the devil left him alone and the angels of God came to minister to Jesus. If you would just say, I'm going to serve God and trust God for my job, my possessions and my children, God can minister to you and be a blessing to you and a protection for you and a hedge of protection before and behind you. And when the devourer wants to come, he will rebuke the devourer as Malachi 3 talks about because he knows you're his child and you're standing on his principles, his commandments. You're trusting in him for not just your timeline for all those things, but you're trusting in that he has all authority. You're not trusting in yourself. That's why God said in order to follow him, you must deny yourself. But when it comes to the vessel called worry, you're worrying because guess what? Yourself is failing you. Yourself doesn't have control of your job that's wavering, that they're closing 500 stores, that they're having issues with the stocks, that the things are plummeting, that the interest rates are going up. You don't have control about what's happening with your job. And you thought you did because you're so smart. But smartness isn't keeping you off the layoff list. But God can God can control the devourer for the possessions you have. Where they want to take your car, your car is about to break. God can work it out. And those children, lift them up to God. Pray for them to God and say, God, I'm going to trust you. And if they go on wayward, I'm going to just keep praying for them. But I'm not going to try to be the savior of the children that you've given me because I've taught them what is right and what is wrong before the Lord. And I'm going to stand on the principles of God. And I'm not going to close my eyes to the evil like Eli. I'm going to tell them this far, no farther when it comes to the word of God. Either you stand on the principles of God or you got to go. You're not going to come in my house and raise hell and cause all that hell to come in my house, and I don't have no peace. I'm going to stand on the peace of God, and I'm going to have the understanding, and I'm going to trust that the peace of God is going to guard my heart, and even when it comes to my job and my possessions and my children, who are not my children because they were God's. They're God's heritage in which he's blessed us. Now, the last is don't fear the change, and that's about death. Death of the job that may go away. You have, you, there are other jobs. God may let you lose that job for you to get a better job than the one that he wanted you to be in to be a witness for Christ. He may let you lose, I've lost houses, I've lost cars, I've lost money, I've lost possessions and storages. I'm not telling you something I don't know. God can let you lose something because he's going to give you something better. But you got to trust and stand on his word. You got to stand on the principles. You cannot allow that demonic activity of worry. Fear and faith cannot ride as traveling companions, y'all. We have to trust God, trust his word. And even when the things are repossessed and they're towing it away, you can say, God, thank you, because that wasn't my car anyway. I have to trust you, God, that you'll work it out. You, I've lost houses, plural houses, and God has given us a better house. 
We lost the house through that crash and God gave us a house and we walked in the lady said, when can you get in here? She didn't do no credit check. She didn't do nothing. God just worked it out because we were praying people. We were trusting people. We said, we're going to stand on God's principle because we gave the money as unto the Lord. We were going to give our tithes and offerings. We're going to help the people. And if the house got to go, house got to go, car got to go, but we're going to trust God. And God gave us a better car. And he just didn't give us one car. He gave us three cars, gave us four cars, gave us another house. Gave us a bigger bank account. God blessed us because it wasn't about those possessions. The possessions didn't possess us. We didn't love the possessions more than we love God. We exalted the Lord and trusted in his word. So when it says, don't fear the change, prepare for it. The change that I talked about on the first teaching was about sickness and disease. And I was talking about death. And now I want to explain to you that even though in Job 1, and you see Job 2, that Job lost in death his children. He lost in the fact that his possessions and his servants were taken away because of Satan. But God, even though Job asked why, I just want to understand why. And even his wife said, you need to curse God and die. And he said, you're foolish. You have to read Job God didn't answer Job and God put him in his place to explain, where were you when I did all this? Because sometimes we think we're so smart, we're deserving of an explanation because we say, God, this is not fair. God didn't tell you to have fairness. He said, have faith. And you have to trust God that whatever is going on in your life, God who loves you is doing it for your best interest. And you say, how is that possible? I can tell you as a woman that just saw her husband go through years of suffering, but both Reverend and I believe God for who he is and what he will do. And that no matter what was going on in his physical body and the possessions and the job, and even our children, none of our children are perfect. You have to trust that God has a plan and it's executing in the way that he sees fit. What we have to do is be obedient and trusting and loving to that plan. But when it comes to things dying around us. Death and physical death shouldn't have victory. And even understanding when things in the natural, in our possessions and in our jobs, and even in these children, things are going in troubled land and awry and you're seeing things, you need to settle yourself down. Don't allow yourself to be overwhelmed by what you see. You have to trust that there's some things. That's why it says faith is the substance of, of it. But faith is the substance of those things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Things that you are praying for, trusting God for, you may not see them right now, but don't, un don't underestimate God and what he's doing in the background of what you can't see. Trust him. You mamas and daddies who've been praying for children and they still are wayward, you don't know when God's going to answer that prayer. You may not be here to see the answer to that prayer. And guess what? God may answer it but he's going to answer it in the way that he has planned, not you, not how you want to see it unfold. It's how the Lord wants to see it unfold. Trust God that he's almighty. He's all knowing. He has the victory. He's won the victory. Satan is a loser. Satan has already been defeated. But guess what? The people that say, I want to serve mammon. I want to serve those possessions. I want to serve that fame. I want to serve the fortune. I want to serve everything. Exalt that above the Lord. You are on the losing team. You are worrying yourself to death. But not just this death of the natural shell. Eternal damnation when it comes to you having a trust of the things of Satan in this natural world and you are rejecting and hating and despising the things of the Lord to your detriment of the death, eternal separation from God. You cannot add one hour of your, of, to your life, but you can destroy yourself by trusting in mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon will continue to apply rent-free space in your head that it's 500 square feet, then it's 1,000 square feet, then it's 6,000 square feet, then it's all encompassing and you just feel like you just need to die. And guess what? That's exactly what Satan wants. Satan wants you to forget about God and get so over, overwhelmed and sickened by what you are not able to do and accomplish to the fact that you say, I need to end it. I don't need this life anymore. I can't 
do this. I can't do this. I'm stressed about this. I'm stressed about that. And that's all he wants you to do is to worry, worry, worry to the point you're worried to death. We have that expression, worried to death. But that's a worry that's true. People are so depressed that they are willing to die because of it. And Satan is in the corner saying, I got him. That's exactly what I want that child to do. And I'm talking about the children. I'm talking about the 20 year olds. I'm talking about the 40 year olds. I'm talking about the 60 year olds. They are killing themselves to drugs, alcohol, suicide, getting stray bullets, going shooting other people. It's because you cannot serve God and mammon. The vessel called worry will kill you if you don't recognize who God is in your life. Jesus understood that he had to serve the one true and living God. And he told Satan the word of God when Satan tempted him in his weakest point of his natural flesh. That's what the, Satan, the devil, did to Jesus Christ. What do you think he's trying to do to you every day? Wake you up instead of you waking up with the breath of life to say, praise you, God. Oh, God, I'm just so upset. If you even went to sleep that night, waking up with fear, waking up with depression, waking up with worry and worry and worry. And you have to stop and say, who is God in your life? You're not. But if you find that you got all that worry, maybe you think you are. Maybe you've gotten it twisted to think that you really are the big boy, big girl. You wearing the big pants. And you think that you should ask God to get up and let you sit down. No, sir. No, ma'am. That does, that's not going to work. And you may be foolish enough to think that you can serve God and mammon. But God has just told you in the word of God, you cannot. You cannot. And I'm sorry for fussing, but it is, it's overwhelming the saints of God and the churches are empty and the children aren't being taught the word of God. The grandparents who are 40 and 45 and 50 years old aren't teaching the word of God because they got to go kick it and show all their tail on TikTok and Facebook and Instagram because you got better things to do because you want to shake your booty for the mammon and the possessions and the fame and what you want from man. And it's, it's just ridiculous at this point because the children need to know who the Lord is. The parents need to know who the Lord is. The grandparents need to know who the Lord is. And the game playing needs to end. We need to go about talking about the Lord Jesus Christ and teaching people the word of God. Saints, we need to be out there throwing seeds in the field, in the vineyards, and we need to have other people water, and we need God to give the increase. We can't be fighting over the stupid possessions of our jobs and these things and these kids. These And I got to tell you, these grown kids that you are allowing to come into your house and destroy you, that is, okay, when is enough enough? When are they going to spit in your face, cuss you out, steal from you, bring all kinds of disease in your house, and I'm not just talking about sickness or disease. I'm saying a diseased mind of their thinking being warped because they're following mammon. When will you wake up and listen to the voice of the Lord and the word of God and say, I'm not their savior, Jesus is. And they got to go. Grown folks that don't want to listen to the word of God have got to go. And you've got to trust God for their timeline. And if they're out on the street because they're doing addiction and behaviors and lying and cheating and all that stuff, they have to actually come to the point of the pig pen. They got to get to the moment where they cry out to God like that child that was, you always hear the prodigal son, but guess what? He left and he had to come back with a repentant heart. Y'all don't want him to leave. Y'all don't want him to have the pig pen moment. They are not all yours. They are the heritage of God. And if they want to be a part of God's family, they need to be obedient because God disciplines the ones they love. And if he's not disciplining them, they don't love them. They love mammon and they hate God and despise God. And you are killing yourself for people that don't even love God. And I, I got to tell this one story about the pandemic. The pandemic showed us about these children when they said, keep yourself out of these crowds because it could spread the virus. The children that have not known about God who love mammon went out and partied their butts off in drinking and smoking and sexing and all that stuff. And they kept saying, 
Won't they care about their parents? Won't they care about those elderly people in their life? They did not give a D-A-M-N because they are, don't know God. They despise God. So you've taught them all their life. They don't have to care about anybody but self, self, self. So now we're in a global pandemic and the children would rather party and self-grandize all the stuff they want, even if it means killing you, killing Nana, killing granddaddy. And you wonder why, why? How could this be? I've loved them. I've loved them. You've allowed yourself to love them greater than God. And God said, I'm not going to have that. I'm not going to have that. And you're going to get to see what the love of those children above loving God gets you. They were willing to let you all die rather than care enough to say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to love my family more. So I didn't mean to be fussing. I just got off the road and y'all just getting a little heat from the spirit of God. I just had a little overflow for tonight. I love you. God bless you. You know, the harvest is ripe, but the labors are few. We have to ask the the Lord of the harvest to, to send out the laborers because there's work to be done. Saints, we can love them. We can, we can tell the truth and love, but we got to tell the truth. We got to tell the truth because Satan is a liar. He's a liar and he's a thief and he wants to steal, kill and destroy. But praise be to God. We have the power of the blood of Jesus Christ and he is there making intercession to the father on our behalf. I love you and Lord willing, I will see you next week. God bless you.